Hello and welcome to another real-time service video. This week we're going to be looking at Shimano hydraulic brake systems and how to bleed them. So to do a full bleed on a Shimano system, these are the tools you're going to need. This is kind of an optional extra, a pad spacer, which just helps, but it's, uh, you can make do without. But things you do need are some decent Allen keys, a 2.5 and a 3mm. We also need a decent Phillips screwdriver, a 7mm open spanner, a bleed block, your bleed kit itself, and I do recommend using you know, the official Shimano one. I tend to find they're a bit better. We've got some isopropyl fast drying contact cleaner, some real deal Shimano mineral oil, and a load of blue towel. I also choose to wear some um, some gloves. You don't have to, but just you know, be careful. The mi mineral fluid can be pretty nasty stuff, so you know, try and be sensible. But anyhow, on with the service. As you can see, we've actually removed a brake from a bike. Now this is basically to aid it visually as much as anything. Um, but it's similar orientation. If you're doing it whilst it's still on the bike, we want to get it so the lever here is nice and flat. That's basically gonna aid oil as it comes, sorry, aid air as it comes up through the system and we bleed it. Um, if you can have that bleed point there as one of the higher points in the system, that's really gonna help. So without much further ado, we're actually gonna start at our caliper end and we're just going to, we've got the three mil bolt here and we've also got this little circlip. So we're gonna take that out of the way. And now these things, pff, they like to go walkies. We're gonna put that somewhere very safe, but not that kind of safe place where you put it somewhere and then immediately lose it, but an actual safe place where you, you won't forget. And we're gonna remove our pads first. So we've got a three mil bolt here. I'm gonna get my Allen key. Using the square end, not the ball end to get it going and then yeah, you can just spin it out once it's low torque is required. We're gonna put that somewhere safe. Now before I start this video, I've washed my hands. And if you want your brakes to run as best as possible for as long as possible, and you want to reduce the risk of contamination, well, it sounds a bit kind of obvious and silly to say, but then reduce the risk of contamination. Go into everything with clean hands, be careful how you handle your brake pads. Notice I'm touching the back plate and not the braking surface. And even when you lay them down, put them somewhere that is clean. Clean it, make sure it's clean, no excuses. And then we're gonna look at our caliper itself. So this is where I'm gonna put my gloves on. <laughs> now, gloves are good, obviously, because they protect you from the nasty and potentially you know, corrosive um, solutions and substances we're using but it also means that my hands have gone in there clean and they're gonna come out of there clean. So when I need to handle the brake pads again, I should be doing so with clean hands. There we go. So like I said, if you want to reduce the chance of contamination, then do it properly. Get a bit of blue towel before we even start. We're just gonna give this a quick wipe down. Just, you know, you'd be amazed at how much dirt, these can get hold of. There we go. Now we get a pad spacer and just use, we're not using it as a lever, okay? If you're having to lever it back, maybe on four pots, it can be quite a difficult job, then just use a tire lever. Um, but if it just, we're just gonna use the flat hand side just to press them in. That is so we can make sure we can fit the bleed block. Sometimes, you know, these systems are basically overbled. If your pistons can't go back, instead of just applying more and more torque and elbow grease, these pistons can sometimes even shatter. So what you'd want to do is let out that valve there. So we'll let out that bolt. And if the system is overbled, then it will mean you can press these back into, so they're flush and be able to install this bleed block like so. It should be able to drop in with just a little bit of slack. Then we're gonna fetch our retaining pin, retaining bolt, and just uh, pop that in, so I'm not showing that very well. There you go, just popping that in there. 
And yeah, just get your three mil and nip it up. Just so, you know, you don't have to put the clip on or anything there. It's just so we, we're gonna get a nice consistent bleed. Um, sometimes, you know, people don't like the feel of Shimano's in terms of the amount of lever throw. You could potentially, if you wanted to, get one of these bleed blocks and just file it down a shade. That would mean that when you're bleeding it, you're essentially over bleeding the system. So it would reduce lever throw. This will probably also mean it's contacting the rotor a bit more if it even warps slightly. But um, yeah, it's something you can do and something people have been known to do. Next, we're gonna get our bleed kit. Now, before you put a bleed kit away, it should be clean. You should clean it properly. Same with these. However, if you take them out and they're not clean, clean them beforehand. Let's just do a proper job. Um, yeah, there's, there's no excuses not to, not to have you know, clean tools and use them properly. And if you share tools and someone else isn't pulling their weight and cleaning them, well, 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 you know what to do. Give them a bit of grief because it's just not on. Um, even, I'll always wipe down the excess of the bottle, that's on the outside of the bottle. Um, it just reduces the chance of contamination, which will become somewhat of a theme today. So we're gonna start off going straight from the bottle and we're just gonna put a little drip of mineral oil in there. It doesn't need to be much. Um, that isn't where the oil gets introduced to the system, but as I will demonstrate in a bit, there is a very good reason. And we're just, there we go, we're gonna let off that bolt. This would be the bolt where sometimes you purge the oil out of if you were indeed having to deal with an overbled system. So you can just undo that and you might see it overflowing a bit. Um, yeah, that's, that's another thing entirely, another conversation. So we've undone that bolt and with the plunger still in the bucket, we're just gonna thread that in. We might have a, actually, let me bring that out of shade there. There we go, we're gonna thread that in. Now the threads on these bleed buckets are really soft and any kind of mechanic that says they haven't cross-threaded one of these is a lie. It's so easy to do. Um, really gentle, just ease it in and, uh, and you'll basically get more life out of your toolage. It's made to thread easily. The reason is that it doesn't damage your, um, your lever and the threads in there, but you know, let's just make it easier for ourselves. And then, we get on to our caliper. So the caliper's already clean, but we're just gonna take our bleed syringe with a nice long tube, and we're just gonna pick up a fair whack of oil. This is because we wanna push all that oil through the whole system. There we go. We're just gonna pop this bit on here, which is sometimes quite hard to get on, but that's absolutely fine. Because then what we do is we slide down this black handle and that snaps on there. That is to basically mean that it's not gonna fall off as you, um, as you try and, uh, and bleed the system. Next, we're gonna get our open-ended seven mil you'd need to just back this nut off, okay? We want to use a good quality spanner here, okay? And make sure it's the right size. That means that's a no on pliers, anything like that. Use a proper spanner and do it properly. Now the reason, as we remove that plunger, the reason we have a little bit of oil in there first is that we're going to just tease it back to begin with, not much. Now we do this for two reasons. One, we do it to remove any air, even those tiny, tiny bubbles coming up there that we potentially could be forcing into the system. And it's also a really good way of inspecting the color of your hydraulic fluid that's in there. When we're gonna push this down, even if it gets really dirty up to there, you can still flush out the system really, really effectively. But it just gives you a good idea of what's to come. And um, yeah, and ju it's just a good habit to get into. So next with that nice and open, if that, socket isn't open enough, it becomes really hard to push the fluid down. We wanna make sure it is open. There we go, and you can actually see it filling up at the bucket here, okay? 
what I've done in the past is actually use alternate between um, Shimano fluid and say some, I don't know, some aftermarket OE fluid. Sorry, aftermarket fluid. And what that is, is because it's a different color, it makes it means when you're bleeding clean fluid that isn't contaminated with oil, such as sorry, contaminated with dirt, such as this, it means it's really easy to see when you bled the full system. But logic dictates that uh, there's only got so much capacity and the amount we put in there, it will have um, passed that. And then using this lever, we're actually just gonna turn that just so it's almost there. And you can actually see it, it does thread in the socket, so thread in the nut a bit. And then using our seven mil with moderate torque, we're just gonna nip that up. You don't need to be swinging off it, but um, yeah, it certainly doesn't help to, uh, to risk damaging parts. So now we're gonna detach our syringe. So whilst, if you actually just put, gently pull on the lever, because you wanna create a vacuum so you don't spray oil, oil everywhere, okay? There we go. And basically, as you're pulling on the lever and you disconnect it, it will actually be drawing air into the, into the syringe. The problem is when you have a pressurized system and you essentially take it off, it can spray everywhere, which yet again increases the chance of contamination. But there we go, that's all good. So I'm just gonna pop that down. And now we're just gonna put this oil, which is clean. Back in there. I'm also then gonna go to the top, and this will just basically make your life easier, okay? We're just gonna actually withdraw some of that fluid. Because we're gonna do some a bit of a, a bit of the old twisties later on. And what that means is it just reduces any chance of spillage. This will then be can potentially quite contaminated oil, although this stuff's actually really clean, which you can then discard. Um, also then, once discarded, I would then clean the interior and exterior of the syringe to make sure it is all absolutely perfect. But before we finish off with the caliper, we're gonna make sure it's nice and clean with some isopropyl alcohol. This is called um, Specialist Fast Drying Contact Cleaner, but it's essentially isopropyl alcohol. Um, Sometimes you, you can obviously use brake cleaner, um, but sometimes that's kind of, well, I don't feel it's such an effective cleaner as, um, as alcohol, basically. Um, sometimes, although it's very good, sometimes they are slightly different. Okay, so that is a thoroughly clean caliper. And then we're gonna go to our lever. So, like they do in Westlife concerts, I don't know if they're still going, I'm gonna stand up out the stool. That's when you know it's getting dramatic. Right, so now when we're bleeding this lever, we wanna do it properly. So some people would then just pop the plunger in, take the bucket out, reinstall that nut, and jobs are good. And what we're gonna do is increase your reach, which actually increases the amount of volume within the lever ever so slightly, not much. We're also going to, with our Phillips, um, Phillips head screwdriver. We're gonna back out this free stroke, which yet again, ever so slightly, increases the volume of that. And when people struggle with bleeds, and they struggle to get good consistent bleeds, it's often because of this. So with those both backed off, we'll just move the plunger out the way. And we uh, begin to just, you don't wanna just be holding down this lever, you kinda of wanna be flicking it, just to prompt any air out. And then, whilst doing so, we can go to the next stage, which is basically, um, dialing in and backing off this reach adjust as we flick the lever. And you'd be amazed at how much more air this can you know, prompt out. So it's super useful. Then once we've kind of done a bit of that, we then put the lever back at full extension just to increase that volume again. And then we're gonna do the same with this one here. A lot of people perhaps don't realize about the free stroke adjustment in these Shimano brakes. It's really important that once it's, you know, fully, fully in, you're not just absolutely mashing it because you can kind of damage the internals a bit. But yeah, you can just see the little bubbles coming out there. And then with it, yeah, again, kind of fully backed out. We're just gonna tap the lever to do any last prompting. But that 
looks pretty good to me. So what we do is we gently pop that plunger in. We're going to just, there we go. So you can see, you know, that is, that system is absolutely brimmed now. And you can see it flat on here. Now, when we're putting in these bleed bolts, or these, this little nut here, it's really important we're not putting it in directly flat because it sounds stupid, but that could actually trap air underneath it. So what we're gonna do is, it's really hard to show you here. We're just gonna put it in at a slight angle, okay? It doesn't have to be much, but that means that as it's put in, it's just gonna force any air, it's gonna give some of the air to go. We're just gonna thread it in and go to the other end just to nip that up. Then we, I'm also gonna use this opportunity before I do the full contaminate, decontamination to put this little fella back on. One last reach for the cleaner. Absolutely no excuses, especially when it's out the bike to give it just a bloody good clean. Um, there we go, even the hose, why not, eh? Then I'm gonna just back off that reach adjust. It was about the center before. Um, then dial in that free stroke, like so. Like we don't, like I said, we don't wanna be over talking that, just nipped up, it's absolutely fine. Um, if it's on the bike, I always say with Shimano's, you can basically measure bike point and free stroke really easily. Well, actually literally do it with a ruler, do it with some verniers and you'll be absolutely sweet. So everything now is, well, it's about as clean as you could hope it to be. So we're gonna reach for our three mil, undo that bolt there like so. Moving it. There we go. Now, to be honest, as you might have gathered, I am a bit fussy when it comes to contamination. Something I have actually would do at home, and you're gonna laugh, is I've actually just got a little spray bottle of water. Now water is great just because it can see if, if water is beading lots and there's kind of a lot of oil there. So I would just spray everything with water, which I'm not gonna do today because I'm gonna spare you the tragic extent of my uh, fear of contamination. So now everything is absolutely clean. There is no risk of um, contaminating these brake pads because I take off my gloves to reveal whew, these freshly manicured hands. <whistles> Me and Dolly actually go down on a Friday afternoon, manicure, pedicure every week. It's an absolute pleasure. <laughs> Anyhow, so touching the back of the plate, we're gonna slide them in through the back of the caliper and they can just drop in. Then we reinstall this uh, little bolt here. He says confidently as it doesn't seem to want to go in through the center. There we go. Just uh, there we go. you can just spin that in and going to the other end just to nip it up. Last but not least, this little devil to just clip on there and that makes sure if that bolt were to wobble loose, it's not gonna go anywhere. And there we have it guys, that's how to do a full bleed on a Shimano hydraulic system. Now be careful of how and where you dispose your oil and be sure to give everything, all your tools, a thoroughly good wipe down. Now, if you wanna stick with the real-time service videos, click down here to see me service a rear shock and click down here to do an air spring service on a RockShox fork. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thank you very much and we'll see you next time.